Friends, welcome to a very special hobby stream from us here at Tabletop Titans. I'm Zach, and the man sitting to my left is Canada's first astronaut and my dear friend and colleague, Mr. Brett Lee. Brett, how's it going? It's going great, Zach. I'm, I'm ready to... Ready uh, to blast off? Ready to, bl <laughs> ready to Baja blast off? Yeah. Yeah. Um, Brett, I have a fact for you, a camping fact. We have a camping episode today. Let's hear it, yeah. Uh, the camping fact is sort of interesting. Uh, 42 million Americans go camping every year. I didn't know that. That's a lot of, uh, a lot of camping. Is, is it? Again, you know, with these facts, I don't know. I don't know. Is that a lot? I, I think, yeah, I think it's, a, I think it's, I think it's a great. The most, more outside, the better. <laughs> the, that's true. The most visited national park is the Great Smoky Mountain National Park. Have you been there? Never. Yeah, we're, we're now West we Coast should, people. We should do that. Yeah, we should do that. Uh, okay, well, let's get camping and also let's get creative. Okay, guys, we have some camping to do this weekend, like I said, and one of the things we're going to be doing while we camp is, you know, making a cool place to camp. And here it is. As you can see, we've got some tall trees, and that's really the start of today's camping adventure. These are modeled after redwood trees. Uh, Brett and I are actually out here in Northern California, so we have the luxury of going to Redwood Forest and checking these guys out. Now, that said, they're modeled after redwood trees, and they're sort of painted to look like redwood trees, but we actually have a different intent for them. And Brett, what is our intent for what these redwood trees represent? Yeah, we're uh, looking to recreate the crude homeworld of Petch today. So uh, there's not a lot of descriptions of what that, uh, what that landscape looks like. Uh, but uh, we've had some conversations with some folks who, uh, who, who know about uh, crude lore and tau lore, and um, they've described it essentially as very similar to a lot of Pacific Northwest redwood forests. So uh, that's, what we're, that's what we're doing today. Yeah, they, I know that these are called Jaga trees, and um, the crew love them. They eat them, and Brett, you were telling me uh, earlier that this is actually, they chew this bark and kind of make their structures. Yeah, crew architecture is very interesting. A lot of their, um, their buildings, uh, cities, um, dwellings are made uh, from reconstituted uh, bark that they chew up, mix with their saliva and fluids, and then regurgitate it and use that as sort of a concrete to build structures from. What you're seeing here, however, is a little more primitive. This is the Crute camping tent. Uh, so we got these tents and we printed them up. You can see we've got some camo on them here. Um, we're sort of imagining these as like a hide, uh, you know, ground up or maybe probably not ground up rather, probably just sliced off an animal yeah. <laughs> and, uh, and camoed by, by our dear friends, the Crute. So we've got the close-up here. Uh, you can see the tent. We're going to do some fun things with this, including making our own stencils. That's sort of the, the wacky thing we'll be doing today. Uh, you can see we've got a little bit of camo pattern. So here's your close-up on your, on your tree, your, your redwood tree. This is what we're going to start with today. We're going to do these, uh, these jaga trees, as the crew call them. Super easy process. We're only going to dry brush. That's it. And here is the tent. A little more involved. We'll do a little bit of airbrushing, a little bit of dry brushing making our own stencils and getting this kind of uh, foresty, jungly camo pattern on the, on the, on the tent here. So yeah. uh, lots of things to do today. And before we do that, we also have one kind of big announcement, right? Yeah. That we want to talk about. Uh, we are going to be, Brad and I, uh, splitting off from the Tabletop Titans. I feel like that's a little... It's a strong it's word. a strong we're, word. We're going to be sister, sister uh, ch channels with Tabletop Titans. So we're gonna be our own YouTube channel. And the main reason for this is uh, some of you guys will log on and you're, you're, you're big into hobby and maybe you don't wanna see all the games getting pushed up in your, in your notifications or maybe the other way around. You are big into watching uh, Adrian uh, and, and Brian beat up on Bridger on a weekly basis and you're saying, you know, Zach and Brett, those guys are cool, but I'm really in it to, to see the Bridger beatdowns. And so we're going to just kind of split off for really logistical purposes. Yeah, this is mostly for you guys uh, so that um, viewers of the channels can decide what they want in their feed. 
Um, and so feel free to subscribe to one or both of the channels. We have the, the channel exists as of today. If you're a member of the Tabletop Titans Discord, uh, you got a notification about it this afternoon. Um, but feel free to go ahead and hop over to the Hobby Titans YouTube channel. That's what it's called. Uh, you can either click the link in the video description or just search for Hobby Titans uh, and it'll pop up. Go ahead and click to subscribe to that if this is the kind of content that you enjoy and want to see more of it. Yeah, and um, go ahead and do that maybe now. Yeah, now will be a good time. We'll, we'll give you a second. We'll give you a second before we move on. Cool, all right. Yeah, uh, you good? Okay. Yeah. <laughs> but, well, well, Thank, thanks for well. that. Uh, <laughs> let's, let's move on uh, to... Paint, paint some paint trees, some trees. Yeah. yeah. So, starting with the trees, um, here they are. Let's get these out of here, and let's get the ones we're going to work on yeah. up here. So these uh, these models, we'll talk a little bit about where they got them, where we got them from, as we're going through today. Um, but they are uh, created. These were created by some folks that are really into Star Wars uh, miniatures, and so these are, you know, as you might. Uh, probably have guessed these are designed for like an indoor table on Star Wars. Um, so, but they work great for for uh, Jaga trees as well. Yeah, and I wasn't particularly familiar. I ended up doing a little bit of research, and I did find out that yeah, apparently there's a sort of like a children's uh, fantasy sci-fi series. Yeah, it involves laser swords yeah. and some psychic abilities. Yeah, it's like it's sort of like <laughs> power swords and and like. Mind levitation, I don't, I don't quite get it. Interestingly, this uh, world is a teddy bear world, <laughs> yes. I found out. You know, that was really surprising <laughs> to me as well. Yeah. And like, I think there's like, um, I think Dumbledore comes in from Hogwarts and, and interacts with the teddy bear. I'm not quite sure. <laughs> um, but anyway, uh, if you look at the link in the description, there's uh, links to the places we got these STLs from. Uh, if you want to download and print some yourself. And one last thing. So is this a different one than this? Or you just shrunk so, it down? So yeah, so the creator of this uh, tree pack uh, is in the process. His name is Dan. Um, his uh, his, his uh, sort of brand is called Terrain Factory. Uh, and he's working on getting a store page up. He doesn't quite have that yet. I just messaged him directly over Facebook and said, hey, Dan, I'm interested in your, uh, in your trees. Can you? you know, sell them to me and we work that out. Uh, so if you're interested in these as well, but yeah, they scale really well. He's got a pack of 11 or 12 of these. Um, I think we paid 16 bucks for the STL pack for, for 12 different designs. And then, yeah, you can scale them to whatever size you want. So we have a, a Mono X printer with a 250 millimeter, um, Z, 245 millimeter Z axis. So we just printed them to max height and sort of scaled the XY for different diameters. I, I love them, and you know, um, I, I'm ex yeah. Let's get started here. Um, I'm excited because we're going back to our roots, <laughs> trees, <laughs> and um, because we started with painting trees. Those are our very first stream. Uh, what, like a week and a, a week and a half ago? Or no, a month and a half ago. Jeez, um, can you imagine if we were streaming that frequently? That'd be that'd be crazy. Oh my gosh. Um, and you guys will recall, I made a big stink about trees not being brown at that time. Yeah. Trees remain mostly not brown. Although we will be using kind of a brown today. It's called something brown. We'll get to it at the end here. Our first step um, is I'm going to be using this Citadel Air. I, I know it sounds crazy, but as you guys who have been watching know, I like to use Citadel Air as um, almost for everything. Um, yeah, why is that? I just like the consistency of the paint. Um, yeah, it, it basically makes it so that you don't have to water down your paint so much. I, you yeah, probably I, still need to thin a little bit if you're, if you're layer painting with them, but... It, it, it gets you much closer to the desired texture of, you know, the final paint that you I, want. I actually almost never do anything with these out of the bottle. I just go, just boom, right, yeah. right in. Yeah. Um, so this one's called Galvor Bach Red, and it's sort of like the deep red maroon kind of color that they have. And I am, just like we've done with trees in the past, Brett, just when you get a chance, if we can do some over yeah. the shoulder, I'll show the yep. technique here. There's nothing too fancy about it. You guys can see all I'm really doing is getting a lot of the paint off of the brush after I've put sort of a lot of paint on the brush and am just roughly hitting it. All this first coat is going to do of the Galvor Bach Red really is, is tint the, the, the bark. It's, it's sort of turning it from a sort of turning it from like a black black to a 
reddish black, <laughs> like a yeah. maroonish brownish black. Um, but it's really important because it's going to uh, begin the process of making these trees have a you know slightly kind of red look to them. And honestly, as far as getting a lot of the paint off the brush goes, you don't have to worry too much, especially if you're using um, like a real thick brush. And these trees are, are, are have great like indentations. Yeah, this, great this is so here. such a perfect model for dry brushing. That's all. Literally, we're, we are going to tint it at the end. But that is literally all we are going to do to paint these. We're just going to yeah. do a series of dry brushing. So for you guys at home watching, I think maybe, well, I hope maybe, let me say, the most interesting part of watching trees come to life uh, as from a modeling standpoint is the, is the series of colors that get used. Um, because I, I know whenever I'm done uh, designing a tree's paint scheme for the first time, I, I look at the colors when I'm done and I go, wow, you know, the tree doesn't look like any of those colors. Yeah. And I feel like the color of the tree should really be the color of the board that the tree is planning to be, go that, that you're planning the, tr the tree to go on. That you could, you know, you could make a generic tree, but, uh, you know, it might not look good if it's on a taiga board versus a canyon board versus a, you know, ruined city board. That's true. And like, especially the very first trees we did were all in kind of a desert setting. Um, yeah. And we used a lot of like drab greens, olive greens, as opposed to like brighter greens for a jungle. Here, we're um, not actually going to use any green. This tree won't have any green in it. Um, it's all just collections of, oh no, that's not true. The next, uh, I'm so wrong. The next color is green. Um, we'll talk about why that is, but it's mostly a series of reds. Um, now, when you go to paint these, uh, so Brett also knows as he moves on to the second one. The first one is the smaller one that's been scaled down. Um, the the next tree has sort of like these. You guys can see these kind of roots, um, these these bumps coming off of it. We're okay with the first color, uh, with the first Galvor Bach red, our first color. We're okay if it gets deep into there. Like in fact, we want that. Okay. Future I've been intentionally trying to avoid that, so I will well, not, no, no, scale not, that back a little bit. Not, uh, sorry, Brad, I more so mean like... Oh, on that particular On the big model. tree, yeah, Got like it. these bumpy ridges. Yeah, I see, yeah. Yeah, there we want to get the Galvar Bach red deep into there. Here, here's why. Here's what's going on here, so you guys are aware. We don't really want... You guys have heard me say this. I, might, I wouldn't be surprised if I said this every week now. Um, we don't really want like true black in nature. We don't want a lot of things to just be absolutely stark black because it doesn't really happen in nature. Um, and we, it's not that it's a bad look, it, it could be a super cool look, um, but we want to reserve it for when we reserve it, right? Um, we're like, we're like perfectly timed to keep yeah. getting this. Um, this will get alleviated as soon as you move on to the next step and I'm still painting this other tree because I'm taking my sweet time compared to you. Which is okay, um, I've done this, I've done a few of these before. Uh, and not too long ago. So um, make sure this color is really great for this. Yeah, it's it's a it's a nice color. I honestly love um, like I, I don't know. GW makes like I, I know other paint companies have a maroon, um, but I like the way that they've got like there's always something special about like one of their maroons or one of their blues. Like there's always something a little weird about it. I like Galvor Bach red. Is this too much? Uh, it is a little, a little bit, much. a little bit too much. Yeah, it okay. always be going against the. I see. Yeah. All right. Yeah. So always when you guys are dry brushing a tree. This with is these... me making these mistakes, so you don't have to. <laughs> yeah. Um. Always go kind of, I guess, what against the grain we yep. say. Yeah. Always cut against the grain, uh, or brush against the grain. I'm like thinking about steaks here. Um, always cut, <laughs> uh, which is perfect for a camping episode. Yeah. Um, always brush against the grains because it's going to leave the recesses darker. Right. right. Now um, that that should be okay, Brett. And ooh, yeah, I just did a little bit. Of it'll get wrong it'll get highlighted a little bit. It'll get tinted. It'll get. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. Let me throw this. Uh, let me throw this. You want me to throw yours on on the close up cam? Yeah, I actually give me Okay. Give, give me a couple seconds. I'm going to put this guy on there. Yeah, it gives gives a little bit of better view um, right now because things are dark. And here actually what we can do 
Yeah, that, there you go. You can see the red. And what I'll do here for you guys real quick, I just finished up my big, my big one. I'll put this one up and I'll put it next to one that we have not done anything to yet. It's just solid black. So there you go. You can see there is a difference there. And actually pretty significant. Um, this is the camera that we think this kind of shows up best on. Uh, and you can see that we've got some pretty significant color difference. Like the red is really kind of starting to bring the tree to life. Yeah, that looks great. It's a nice, you can see, you can see where this is going. Okay. And I like the idea. I like your suggestion <coughs> of sort of, uh, you know, having it be a heavier dry brush down low and then, um, and then sort of taper it up a little bit. Uh, yes, absolutely. Um, okay, now the next color we're going to use um, is a green. And, you know, I always say trees are not brown. <clears throat> and what I really mean when I say that, not that I'm walking back my words, but what I really mean when I say that is we don't usually paint trees with a brown. We want sort of one of these browns that is like, uh, you know, like I was saying in our first, in the first episode with Adrian, it, it lives under... It's brown one color lives under. Yeah. Yeah, one color. I think, I think the way I like to think about it is you want to apply non-brown colors that when combined uh, make it feel like brown. Or they remind give you, the you of brown. impression of brown. Or and, they, yeah, yeah, exactly. And that's what we're doing. And that's what happens when you combine uh, green and red. You get, yes. you get you brown. Get brown. So yeah. our next color is also a very dark color, also Citadel Air, and also a color we've used on trees in the past on, on our first episode. It's called Deathcore Krieg, uh, Deathcore Drab, sorry, from Deathcore Krieg. And it is like a super browny, dark, grayish, green kind of a thing. Yeah. Honestly, perfect for trees. Because those are sort of the, that's sort of the palette of trees. Yeah. Right? Brown, gray, It's an green. organic color. It feels like moss or loamy yeah. earth or, yeah. Okay, now as we put this one on, um, I'm gonna, I'm, we're still dry brushing, so I'm gonna get, get a bunch of it off on my brush here. Um, after you clean your brush, if you're using the same one again, like I am, uh, make sure you dry it very well. Like cleaning it, sure, like that's, that's great, but really the important thing is that you wanna dry it yeah. nicely. Especially, yeah, you're dry brushing here, and you've just, if you dunk it in a cup of water, it's not gonna have the desired effect. Right. So um, here we go. And Brett, just when you get a chance, we'll, we'll do yep. maybe over the shoulder or shoulder a little bit. But you guys are looking at home, it's still going to look kind of like blackish um, until we put the last few coats on. Um, but I will do this, do the quick drab here. And oh, Brett's little guy's over. So now, okay, now that this is on, we'll go back to Glam Cam step by step. And you guys can see Brett's here still is just the red. And here it is now with the drab on it. Okay, drab here. This is the green. Brett's is still just red right here. Okay, so you can see it's starting to kind of turn it like brown, organic, get a little bit of like uh, almost like grayer, greener kind of stuff going on in there. Zach, how would you feel if I didn't clean my brush between applying this red and this green? Um, I don't know. We'll see what happens. This isn't like a huge hobby faux pas I'm committing right now? No. <laughs> It'll probably be okay. We also have other brushes, um, and I think like we should switch brushes as we get to the more top colors. Sure, sure. Um, these these bottom colors are o okay to kind of be sloppy with. The big thing that we're doing with bottom colors, when we are painting over black and we're doing things like trees or rocks or concrete, anything like that, um, is we want to eliminate. Again, like I said, we want to eliminate pure black. We we really want pure black to not be something that somebody looks and goes, oh, it's black, right? Yep. Um, that's it, that's kind of the goal. So how much of the red do I want showing through? Because, you know, I'm up using the same technique to apply the green as I did the red. And so the, the green is hitting the same ridges as mm -hmm. the red did. And so, you know, I guess you could think about it like, if I went through and did the exact same, perfectly the exact same process, I would end up with a, the green paint in exact same places as the red. Good question. Um, so the way I can think about it is I, I push a little less hard into the thing as yeah. I'm doing it. Okay. I'm being a little more gentle. I also am kind of okay with leaving area like missing areas. Right. Yeah. I, I don't know if you guys, nobody at home like timed us, but I went through the green a lot quicker on this than I did the red on this. Well, I'm sure somebody, I'm sure somebody 
time to us. <laughs> I hope so. Um, How long did Zach spend on the red versus the green? Yeah. So please you, let us know. You should spend like, and I'm already I'm already done the the green on this one. And honestly, again, the if it is important to know like why are you adding a color to something? Yeah. Um, the red takes us away from the the first red, the Galvor Bach red, took us removed stark brown, stark black, excuse me. The uh, Deathcore drab removes the maroonness. You know, yeah. uh, maroon is not really the color we want a tree to be. Um, so we remove the maroon nature of things. Yep. And we turn it kind of like this reddish brown. Yeah, we talked about red plus green equals, equals brown, brown, basically. Um, okay. So when we are finished with, we're, we're cruising along here in our tree. Yeah. When we are finished with uh, Deathcore Drab, we are now going to red. We talk about all the time on the stream, what is the color of the thing, right? And the color of this thing is a very, uh, it's hard with trees. I, I can tell you what color it's not, it's not brown. The color is sort of like a reddish, uh, I, I guess, reddish brown, <laughs> but, but really like a reddish look to it. Um, yeah. You know, when you look at a redwood next to, you know, let's say like a car painted cherry red, and somebody asked you to which one is red, yeah, you would pick the car, right? Or a red uh, solo cup here, which we love in the United States. You would say, that's red, right? Um, so reddish is the color. And this color right here, word bearers red, which of course makes sense with uh, yep. Galvor Bach, right? Word bearers red, that is the color our tree will be. That is the color of the thing we are working yeah. on today. Okay. Uh, just really quickly, before we move on to our next color, uh, I see a question from Magnus in chat about the logistics of th uh, this channel versus uh, the new channel. Um, yeah, and we forgot to mention during the intro, um, this will be our last week live streaming on the Tabletop Titans main channel. And so it, it, beginning next week, that's when we'll uh, start live streaming over there. We just wanted everyone to make sure you subscribe if you want to see that notification so that when we switch, you'll 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 be sure to get that notification. Yep. Okay, uh, sorry. No, no problem. Um, okay, so, Brett, if you would, one more uh, top down or yep. over the shoulder, yep. whatever you think is better. Um, here we go, and you can actually see, um, there's the color here, and you can see it's starting to not be quite as black now as I paint this the uh, word bearers red which is kind of like a brick red almost. I, I would say like I would not be surprised. I did not check um, other paint lines. We have other paint lines around. I did not check, but I would not be surprised if other lines, at least one other line out there, said something about this being like a brick kind of a red. Um, and so there we go. We can do one more comparison. Let's do uh, one more glam cam yep. comparison uh, on the small one here. So Brett's two steps, it's, it's got the drab, and it's got, uh, so it's got the Galvor Bach red and the Deathcore drab. And here's mine, which you can see the uh, second layer of red now sitting on top. So uh, definitely starting to kind of come to life here with the red. Yeah, you can definitely see that. Yeah. This is almost like a highlight here. I and like this we, a lot. we actually are going to do one more uh, highlight. We have the, the last color is, is, a, is a very serious highlight. That's where we're going to bring things to life. Here's yours. Um, you know, over my trees. The other thing we should remember to do, Brett, by the way, soon is we missed a question. Oh, yes. Last, I have it right here. Last week. Thank you yeah. um, for the reminder. So last week, uh, during our, our regular live stream, right at the end, uh, Broken Chef uh, sent us a super chat which we had already kind of signed off for the evening, um, but it came through right at the end, and so I wanted to make sure to read his uh, Super Chat today. So thank you, Broken Chef. I'm having trouble with this paint recipe. I want a yellow tinted Nurgle, but I can't figure out where to go exactly. Uh, should I Vallejo blue-green the Nurgle? So I think he's looking for suggestions on a paint recipe for a more yellow tinted, um, tinted Nurgle. And then he says, should he, like... <laughs> should he do Vallejo blue-green? That's Adrian's favorite color. I think Adrian would say you always 
always play over blue green everything. Um, yeah, what do you think? Yeah, um, let me answer that in one sec. I will say one real quick as we get to uh, this this color, the the brighter red, the word bearers red. Uh, I was saying earlier, we want the dark red to get into these ridges, the, the bumpy kind of ridges. Um, we don't necessarily care quite so much if word bearer red gets into those ridges. And you guys will see the look we get here, which is that those those areas look just sort of naturally darker now. Um, and uh, Brett, if you maybe just maybe it'll show up on the yeah. on the over the shoulder here. Um, you can see I'm I'm leaving this kind of area here, and I'm really just getting the out like these bumpy ridges especially, and these two colors that we're doing the last two colors this red and the the high, the final highlight color we're going to do here in a second, we don't want into those deep nooks of of the of the redwood tree. Um, <coughs> excuse me, guys. So I think what I would say about a, uh, a about a yellow tinted Nurgle, um, I, I, I think if yellow is kind of notoriously a little tricky. So here, here's probably what my approach would be. Um, I would, if I wanted yellowish Nurgle, I would probably paint it mostly yellows. And then I, I think I might tint it with like something like Antonio Camo shade, which we're about to use in this channel uh, or in this stream. That's sort of like the the, the drab um, wash, like the Citadel's wash. I'd probably airbrush tint it. Yeah. Um, because it gives it like a smooth, uniformed appearance. It's going to pull naturally in, in yucky parts of the model, which is what you want it to do. I think, yeah, I think <coughs> that's what I was going to say is that you can paint sort of a conventional Nurgle color scheme and then tint to make it yellowish. You know, airbrushing. Yes. What you're describing is the opposite of what I'm saying. I think it would work as well. Mm. So Broken Chef, I, I, you could go either way. You could, you could really paint it yellow, including like, I um, actually have it right here. It's called Averlin Sunset. Um, any kind of yellow that's like getting marigold-like, yeah. starting to not be like a, like a canary yellow. Um, GW calls it phalanx yellow. Um, so you're getting like sort of like a canary yellow. I might start with brown and, and end with this. Yeah. And then tint green, Anthonian camo shade, or like Brett suggest suggesting, I might go up to, I think it's called Rotten Flesh or Ogren, Ogren camo, something that's like this like very pale green, um, and then tint with the yellow wash, and I forget what the name of the yellow wash is, but it's actually great, I love it. Again, through an airbrush. I've never done Nurgle, but I, I think I would use a similar process, honestly this is gonna sound weird, but that I do on trees. Like I would yeah. do the similar process of building up natural yeah. colors and then doing a tint, um, because then you're going to get to see again what lives underneath things, right? And I think like <clears throat> Nurgle is a great opportunity. I mean, like the the processes you'll use for organic natural things like trees are similar to the processes you'll use for for, for painting a Nurgle army, because for painting a dead body, for <laughs> for painting a, a festering, disease-ridden, filthy. Space Marine. Exactly. Yeah. I, I agree. Um, okay, I'm moving on to the last color here, and you guys are going to be shocked because this color is called Death Claw Brown. <gasps> now, I know oh that... Oh my <laughs> gosh. I know. I, I'm, I'm on record saying but Zach. trees are not brown, but when you guys see this color, <laughs> like, first of all... Um, but I, Zach, you told me. <laughs> this color is just like not brown uh -huh. <laughs> like okay here we it's go it's on the bottle yeah it's on the bottle but if you want to we can do top down people can see this color here uh this is not brown right like this is it, like okra i guess um and this it's is our, very orange it's very orange and this is our final highlight color and this color all it's going to do is it's just going to make this red sing um is, is kind of how i think about it. it's just it's like adding a little bit of lemon juice to your broccoli which you should all be doing by the way um, mm. Right at the end, or like That's your a good asparagus. analogy. Yeah, it's just yeah. going to make it sing. It's not going to taste like lemon, you know, but it's going to just kind of make it come it's to life. Just a little life. bit of acid. Just yeah. a little bit of acid, right? And so uh, we are just doing, um, we're just making it sing. You can see here, singing. Look at that. La 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 la, <laughs> la singing. Okay, uh, okay, we'll do our we'll do our um, our glam cam comparison here yeah. as well. Brett is yep. done uh, the red. So there's the red. It's looking pretty red woody. I actually stopped here um, when I was designing this. I stopped here and I said, I think we can get a little bit more out of this. And that is right here. 
you can see it just a little bit more, just a little bit more zip in there. Um, it kind of gives it like this, uh, I don't know, yellowish idea here compared to without, without the final highlight. Um, and there's still one more thing we are going to do here, which is we're going to tint it with Anthonian camo shade. Um, and that's, that's it. We're, we're almost done with our trees. Zach, Andrew Whitehead has a suggestion in chat that for a, a Nurgle paint scheme, you paint warm white and do washes in yellows and greens, which I think that's sort of like, that's like a level of yeah. process beyond sort of my level of painting yeah. skill. Like Andrew's, Andrew's painting this amazing um, Night Lord's army that, where he's not painting any of the lightning. He's like, he's like painting the lightning all white and then he's like washing over the white lightning stripes. Yeah. In, in, in various color, with various colored washes. And it looks amazing, but. Yeah, Brad, right, um, if we could just do top oh, yeah. for a sec. Um, or, or, yeah, that's that's good as well. Yeah, and I'm so. Getting distracted it, by so, glowing over Andrew's. Yeah, so we know, we know Andrew. Um, he's in our local <clears throat> area here. And he's he's really like the, he's like the guy when it comes to painting around here. Um, yeah, so take his advice. Take his advice. Um, that said, I yeah, I think like, uh, I, that's, he has a neural army um, or a kill team. He did the Geller box, Geller box infected guys. Yeah, um, they look amazing. Um, maybe we'll convince him to put um, put some up in the Discord. Uh, they they look great. His are like kind of purplish as well, um, but the green and purple things going on. They look amazing. Um, All right, but we're not painting Nurgle today. We're painting trees. Trees. Okay, one more over the shoulder so here, Brett. Yep. I do want to show uh, the way these big ridges right here. The way this final highlight color like just lays on them is, is like my favorite. And it starts to look like something you like want to make a kitchen table out of, you know? Or like, ooh, even maybe a dining room table. Better better than a kitchen I table. I like the you know combination of colors that end up on our on our newsprint here. It gives you a great sense of like what what's what colors are in this thing that we're painting by the time we're done. You just kind of sort of look at it and see the palette of colors that got used. Yeah, I know. It's and then you can see each of them when you look close at it. Sometimes when I paint something in here in the studio for like the next week, I'll come in like, like a few days before or a week before and get, make sure I know what I'm doing and, and paint something up. And um, then I just leave the paints out in, in the row. And yeah. usually I write down on, a, on like a sticky note or something. Um, but sometimes I don't. And I'm always like, man, I really hope like Adrian doesn't come in here because he hobbies here as well. And just like moves everything all over the place. Because I need those paint splotches. Yeah. <laughs> um, Zach, how do you feel about these trees from a modeling perspective being cut off at the knees, as it were? Yeah. We were talking about that ahead of time a little bit. I know. I um, feel like it's a pretty contentious thing for terrain makers. It's a little bit of breaking the fourth wall. We've been talking about it for a while, Yeah. actually, like maybe a year. Yeah, <laughs> and, this project um, has been in the works for a long time. So and there are going to be more videos on this project also. Yeah, a lot more videos, actually, yep. as a matter of fact. And um, here's what I'll say, and I think this is what we kind of talked about when we came to. Sometimes I see people uh, maybe have like five, six, ten of these, and they put yeah. them all over the board um, kind of randomly. Not randomly. I know, I, I know people are putting thought into it, but they, what they don't do that makes them look really good is they don't like cluster them up. I yeah, think they've got like one by itself. Yeah, and you guys kind of saw in the videos that we had at the start of the stream, like we had them all clustered up. And then in addition to that, we had like other trees, other pine trees that we've worked on yeah. um, surrounding them. And if you go to one of the redwood forests here in California, there are two main like super giant trees, um, at, at least in the ones in Northern California. So there's the Sequoia, which is like in more Southern central interior of the state. But the forests here in Northern California, they have the redwood, and then they also have, I think it's actually the Douglas fir, and they grow super huge, and they almost rival the redwoods. Yeah. So there are two like species of super giant trees that yep. live in these forests. And they grow in clusters. They don't they grow, grow in like one, one by itself. Right. You'll see them almost a cluster of three or four, and then 20 yards away, there'll be another cluster of three or four. Yeah. Um, and the reason, of course, that makes sense is because they, they, they live in particular areas, like where the conditions have to be just right. And by particular areas, I mean that forest, that, like, that, that acre has to be particularly right. right. And so you'll get a bunch of them, and they do dominate that area, but there are other like pine trees and other types of trees under them still. Right. So, and I think, 
Yeah, go ahead. Sorry. No, I, I just think that like I've seen them used on like Endor boards. People don't have a lot of them historically. Yeah. They only have a few, so they put like one here, one on the other side of the board, a couple randomly. I don't like how they look then. Yeah. I like how they look when you cluster them. You yeah. put a lot of moss around here. They need to look like, not like here's a you know I planted this in my yeah in my manicured backyard and somehow it a makes, million years ago and here and it somehow is. <laughs> it makes the fact that the top is chopped a little less objectionable when you do that. I, think, I, I can't really describe why. I can't describe why either, but I think I think you, I don't know, for me, I, this is the part I look at, right? Right. And right. one thing I'll say, I was noticing this, we were talking about this before uh, we started streaming today, I was noticing when I was taking the videos, for the, taking the shots for the, uh, for the opening, I was noticing that they actually cast like, some darkness onto the board. Yeah. So I'm really excited to see them get used in, in the game right. on, on the channel. Some realistic shadow that you don't have to paint on. You can just let the fact that the trees are large and bulky actually block the lighting in the room. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, so I, I'm, it, it should be fun. Now, um, speaking of fun. Yeah, I'm, I'm having fun. You're having fun? Okay. <laughs> We uh, we had a poll. Oh my gosh! We had a poll this week, and we wanted to poll the Titans Premium members. By the way, um, for those of you who are in Titans Discord, uh, our our hobby uh, channel is not going to use a different Discord for the time being. Maybe ever. We like the community. Um, we want to talk to you guys. You know, yeah. we, so we'll we'll be using the same Discord. Um, so if you're in there, you don't have to join another Discord. Um, just another YouTube channel, please. ASAP, and um, ASAP is possible. ASAP is possible. Um, and so uh, we did a poll of Titans Premium members, and what I wanted to know, what we wanted to know is, um, which 40K nature boy would you most want to go camping with? You're um, going camping. Yeah, and there were a variety of choices, there, and there Premium choices. members had the opportunity to vote, um, and these were the options that yeah. we presented them. So we put together the options here, so we'll go through them. Okay, first up, we've got the Tau Pathfinder. And we put together some pros and cons. Pro for the Tau Pathfinder. He's your camping buddy. Awesome gear. This guy seriously glamps. Glamping means glamour camping. Bridger didn't know that. Con. Brings up the greater good quite a lot. Like, seriously, folks, this guy won't shut up about the greater good, like, all weekend. Okay, Tau Pathfinder. First option. A Suryani Ranger. Pro. Webway makes lugging gear a breeze. Okay, just zip it in and out whenever you need anything. That's a big deal. That's a big pro. You don't have to carry any of your gear. Con, his sensitive Xeno Psyche. When Marshmallow catches fire, this drama factory shrieks and stamps it out, throwing it to the ground. Can you believe that? Okay, here's, a, here's, here's our next 40K Nature Boy, the Orc Commando. Pro, very few. Pretty much no pros camping with an Orc Commando. Con assures you not to bring anything. He's got it covered. Brings literally nothing and says... Nature will provide, Hume. And then last but not least is the impetus for this whole show, and that is the crew carnivore. Pro, not a picky eater. Con, eat you. Okay, so these are your nature boys, and we asked everybody uh, who they would most want to camp with, and yeah. we, 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 got, we got some results. We got, we got some over responses. a thousand responses. Yeah. And here are the results. Oh my gosh. There we go. Here Tau we go. Pathfinder. At the top, people want to camp with the Tau Pathfinder. Second, the Asuriani Ranger, then the Orc Commando, and the least appealing camping partner is the Crew Carnivore. Yeah, I was a little disappointed. <laughs> yeah, Brett, what does this say about uh, what does this say about Discord members? <laughs> well, I feel like the issue with Crew Carnivores is that you you'd be worried that they would eat you. They will. Um, they will. Eat you. We saw. We saw. Uh, that. But I, I think the solution to that is to just not have any desirable genetic traits, and uh, yeah. I, you know I don't like. I don't have chameleon skin. I don't regenerate. I don't, you know, like I'm not eight feet tall with superhuman muscles or reflexes. Like the crew, the crew's not going to have anything to do with my genetics. So yeah. I, I feel like I'm safe. You're kind of tall, uh, but not as tall as a crew. Crew's, a crew <laughs> yeah, would get be, shorter. They'd, it'd be a downgrade. Eight, yeah, it'd right? be a downgrade. Exactly. So I'm not worried about it. Um, I, I think what I found was interesting was we were sitting here watching and we were saying, um, you know, who who are people? I was wondering who was going to win. I thought actually the orc was going to win. Yeah. And I, I'm kind of sitting here and watching the results come in. The results never were close. Like. When you put a Bridger kind of walked me through the process, and when you put a when you put a a, a poll up, 
the numbers start shooting up right away and like nothing ever catches up to anything. So like within the first like 30 seconds, it was obvious the Tau Pathfinder was gonna win. Um, and I, I think the thing is if you went camping with either the orc or the crew, you're, you, you have to kind of know you're probably gonna die. Yeah, it's probably, it's probably how it's gonna end. You, you don't wanna camp with him. I, I think the ranger w might be interesting, but I think it's gonna be rough. You also might die. You might die. Um, and I think it's just going to be maybe rough, maybe yeah. kind of awkward. I imagine him just like... He's not going to be a good conversationalist. Not, yeah, he's... You know... Everything's so drama with him. Yeah, like a, a, a human in their, you know, midlife is not going to have much to relate to to a thousand-year-old, uh, right. you know, pottery maker. Yeah, he's going to, like, remember our dinosaurs. And yeah. I guess we could ask him about our dinosaurs. That's true, yeah. Okay. Um, but, but the Tau Pathfinder, I think, is going to be fine. You know, he's going to be nice. He's going to share with you. But he's seriously gonna annoy you about the greater good. Yeah, he's gonna. By the time you're done with that weekend, if you haven't signed up for the greater good, there's gonna be, uh, you know, he, he's gonna he's he's gonna be gone that morning, and th there's gonna be a crude carnivore there's there. Be, that's right. That's right. He's, he's gonna be like, we we tried. You uh, you didn't you didn't sign up. So here's a pulse rifle. Th <laughs> Thanks for everybody who uh, thank you for participating. Yeah, that was who, a lot of fun. Who participated in uh, their 40k nature boy. Um, are we done painting trees? Uh, yeah, I've got I've got my two. I think we're all set. That's it. Can we glam cam your two? <clears throat> yeah, let's do it. Um, Here's what they look like finished. Step one of our camping uh, camping experiment is done. We are moving on to step two, part two of our camping uh, excursion here, and we're going to be making to start off our own stencils here and. Um, what I want, uh, I want to talk about this, this product a little bit, what, what I got here. Um, it's called Vivid Vinyl, and it, it is literally blue vinyl with a backing. Yeah. And what and we this use, is specifically for stenciling, right? Uh, I think so, yeah. I, okay. I, I guess. I, you could use it for anything. Yeah. Let's show what it is we're going to be making a close-up here. Yep. Um, actually, I'll put it back on Glam Cam. Sounds good. So we can see here the camo pattern. This is our crew tent. Brett's gonna talk a little bit about this in a moment here. Um, but let me kind of go over a few, our process here for, for painting and a few things we did. First, you guys can see that it's got this camo on it. That's what we're using the stencils for. That's actually the last step. It goes on after the dry brush because we want it to look like the crew maybe painted it on um, <clears throat> fairly recently. Now you could dry brush last. That would give it the look that um, maybe the crew dry you know, painted it on yeah. a month ago, right? As opposed to as opposed to recently, um, but we are going to be making our own stencils uh, with the vinyl, um, and I'll show you guys how to do that process. It's it's pretty nice. While I'm doing that, Brett, tell us about Petch. Tell us about the crew. Tell us about your love of the crew. <laughs> and why we're here making why the we're here doing this. tent. Yeah. Yeah, so uh, this project started, <coughs> oh my gosh, close to a year ago. Um, it was just, yeah, we, um, we had this idea for a narrative scenario that was the um, sort of a recreation, historical recreation of a, a fluff piece in the Tau Third Ed Codex where um, during the, uh, the, when the orcs initially attacked the Crute homeworld of Petch, the Tau came to their aid, and this was sort of the uh, galvanizing moment when the Crute were like, okay, you know, we want to ally with you, and they accepted the greater good. And so there's this, uh, there's this, you know, planet-wide battle that happens, and there's a, an element of that where, um, you know, the, the idea of orcs fighting against Crute and Tau on the, on the Crute homeworld was it was an interesting idea to explore from a narrative perspective, um, and so we designed uh, we want we wanted to design a narrative scenario on a themed table uh, to basically play out you know yeah. some of these battles. And so, what does the the flora and fauna look like on Patch? What do what does crude architecture look like? If you are um, uh, and so the scenario that we're sort of imagining is that a Tau force that's on, on the planet to uh, support the Kroot is maybe traveling from some rear guard operating base towards the front lines, maybe with a Kroot escort, and they get ambushed 
uh, along the way by a group of orcs. And so what does you know, a crew traveling party look like? What sort of lodgings do they set up in, in the nighttime to, to sleep in? What, uh, what lodgings do Tao set up in the nighttime to sleep? Like, do they have tents? Do they sleep on the ground? Do they dig holes? Do they set up tarps? What kind of sort of support vehicles do they use to trans transport their baggage? You know, we know Crute have narlock, greater narlocks and baggage greater narlocks. They're forge-world models for those things. Um, but you know, what what do what do the Tao use for that sort of logistical support? Um, and so I started a conversation with some some friends who are knowledgeable about such things, um, and <laughs> yeah, some like there's a lot of Tau like uh, lore nerds uh, out there, and a, a few of the best of them. But um, as, sorry to interrupt. Yeah, as you sure. as you geek out for us a little bit more. Oh, you want me, you want me to yeah, top so, down here? Uh, yeah, okay. but and, I'm getting distracted. <laughs> no, that's okay. Uh, what what I want to show you guys real quick before Brett continues, I'm here on on a cutting mat. What I'm actually, I don't need the cutting mat really for what I'm doing. Uh, what I'm doing here to start off is I am making this kind of grass-like stencil that you can see over here. Um, I use this in two layers on the tent. Um, so you, you'll be able to kind of see the two layers of grass on the tent. Uh, this is really just very easy to do. Uh, and I'll let Brett continue as I could just kind of demo this. But it, it really just a basic pair of scissors for this. First and you've step. got, you know, the idea here is that this is something that's painted on to the animal hides to make it camouflaged, essentially, in the habitat that we're in. Exactly. And you guys can see I'm not even, like, for the grass one, um, I'm not actually, for any of these, I, I, I didn't even really bother to trace out a pattern. If that made you feel more comfortable, you should do that. But um, for this, I'm just really cutting, <clears throat> you know, extremely acute triangles, basically. That, that's it. Yeah. Um, so just to wrap up my town nerding out. Um, yeah, so uh, it turns out that this has already been done by Games Workshop. And I did not know this, but um, friend Max was like, hey, uh, there's a White Dwarf article where when the, when the Tau first came out, they were... Uh, they talked about Tau Terrain, and they had a, a, a whole like three-page article in White Dwarf. Turns out it's White Dwarf 265, um, and uh, it's actually we have uh, we have a picture of that. It's uh, linked in the description. But um, here's the here's a picture from White Dwarf 265 that shows the uh, Tau Terrain. But also they did a section. One of the pages was on a crew tent. Um, and so this is canon, as canon as you can get, uh, this, this tent design. And it turns out, uh, going one step further, it turns out that uh, a guy named Master Shaper Felix has designed a 3D model for this tent, mimicking the tent in that White Dwarf article. So all of this is available online um, on Cults 3D. Again, link in the description. And so this project that we were imagining, like, oh, what if there's a Tau Force on patch helping out some native crew? They get ambushed. They're traveling together. They get ambushed. They've already got like this this genius, yeah. Nestor Shaper Felix, has already you know designed this model. Uh, and we were able to download it and um, and print it out so that we could do this uh, to the, uh, explore this board concept. And I'm so glad that it exists because um, 3D printing is this, just this amazing tool. You saw that white dwarf. Uh, from 20, 2002, 2002, yeah, 2002 almost yeah. 20 years ago. Um, 3D printing is, wasn't a thing really back then to the extent it is now, the, the way it is now. Yeah. Um, so I'm really glad we didn't have to make this out of card stuff, <laughs> to be honest <laughs> with you. Um, okay, now the other one I want to show you guys how to do, the grass one, um, it was, it is here, and I already have one. You can also see here I have like these leaves, and I have cut them to kind of be like these broad leaf patterns. And in them, I cut these little, like, broken leaf areas. Um, these are, I, well, look, the whole thing's optional, right? I'm about to tell you, these are optional. What I mean by that is, just be aware, when you do these, I found that I, they, they show up a little bit. Um, I would need to cut them bigger and thicker to get them to really show up better, I think. And also, they can be a little tr uh, problematic to work with because you really need to make sure when you, when you apply them to the tent to do the airbrushing, you really need to make sure they're, like, on there good. We'll, we'll get to that step in a second, but I'll show you how I make them, and I'll actually go ahead and make it a little bit bigger. So again, I actually don't really bother with um, a stencil 
or like drawing it ahead of time. Um, you may feel more comfortable doing that, but I kind of curve the, the thing as I'm going. Then I go back up to the top and I'm gonna curve down. And I'm going to stop to cut in the broken, the broken part here. And I'll do a slightly bigger one this time. We'll see if it shows up a little bit better. The stencils, after you use them, are fairly reusable. Um, although I, I think you're gonna find that there is some degree of a limited shelf life as they, as they take on paint, frankly. They, yeah. they start to kind of break down a little bit. And these have an adhesive on one side so that they are good to like keep the paint from sneaking behind them if you press them down really, really well. Yep. So that one's a little bigger. We'll see if that shows up. I would keep this. Um, I, I kept all these these ones. Uh, you could do like an inverse, a, a negative here as well for a cool effect or some other thing you want to camo for the crew, yeah. which is like, you know, you, you would stick this on something and then spray around and peel it off. Yeah. Could, could look super cool. Certainly would look super camouflagey. So, um, how many of these you want to put on your, uh, you want to put on each stencil, sort of up to you. When we go to apply them, you know, you think, okay, well, I'm going to put one here like this. I'm going to, I'm going to airbrush it, and then I'm going to do another one here. The only reason I really put three is not so that I can layer it and paint all three. Although I, I did do that also, but it was more so so I just didn't waste too much of the vinyl paper. And I had three different stencils, three different patterns for the for the leaf. Um, so I'm gonna do the same thing here, and I'll put I'll put kind of two here. For this one, I'll go straight up and cut in on the left instead of cutting in on the right. This one we're gonna make even bigger. There's a whole conversation going in chat about whether crew are an advanced civilization. I feel like it's a <clears throat> trap. It's definitely. Uh, a trap. I'm not sure. But, I really but, want to address that question here today. But. but I mean, as far as like the whole point of this conversation, which is what civilization storylines are we following in 40K? Where Crute are not one of them, right? I think that they're definitively there with orcs, which I did say on Saturday when I was producing. I admitted that, okay, let's say they are civilization, but that they're a rather static civilization. They don't go through quite the roller coaster of uh, stages of civilization that that humans and Necrons yeah. and Asuriani and Tau yeah. are going through, right? They're kind of static, and they are very much a force of nature. So I, I, that I'm not taking back. They are a force of nature. I'm not taking that back, Adrian. Um, <laughs> but what I will say is, okay, sure, they're, they're sort of a civilization. Very static, though, I, I think. I don't know. We're not really following the story of Crute, you know? Um, yeah. Uh, you know, I think in the same way that there are people who are very passionate about orcs, there are people who are very passionate about Crute. If you do some Googling, you'll find entire Tau armies converted to, to have crew equivalents of every unit, you know, crew battle suits and crew vehicles. And, um, you know, at one point, I think there's a lot of uh, passion for the original crew mercenaries codex where crew had a whole, you could make an entire list that was just in fast attack choices, multiple fast attack choices, multiple elite choices. Um, they had snipers, they had flying units, they had yeah. monsters. It was in that issue, actually. The, it was, the, yeah. The same issue the we, same we found, yeah. White Dwarf 265, yeah, yeah. from 2002. Um, yeah, so there's a lot of a lot of passion around the crew, for sure. Um, I don't know if quite as much as orcs. Definitely not as much as but, orcs. But uh, there are people, to <laughs> your point earlier, who are following the crew as much as uh, Grotworks and Adrian follow the orcs. Yeah, um... So, uh, stencils are done. We're not quite ready for them yet because we actually need to first paint our crew tent. Yep. Um, it's it's kind of animal hide color. So I've got these stuck here. I'm gonna set this thing down to the side and we're gonna pull that back up when, once our uh, our tents are ready. So, to paint our, our crew tents, yep. I've gone ahead and already put the first base coat down and it was called Stormy Gray. This is a Reaper uh, paint. It's great paint and uh, stormy gray. It's just like a, a dark gray. I think you could use Mechanicus standard gray for from the Citadel line. Um, and I went ahead and did that. Just a base coat, yep. nothing special. The second color I'm going to use is this interesting color. I don't know that there's a exactly a GW equivalent, a Citadel equivalent. Although in name, I, there at least used to be. It was called Wolf Gray. Um, GW's Wolf Gray is kind of like the Space Wolf yeah. color. This one is like a little bit of drab, brown, olivey, gray look to it. Um, and so, ooh, Brett and I both have an airbrush today, ready to go. Let's do it. Yeah. Um, dueling airbrushes. Yeah, so for this color, 
am I, how am I, how is this process happening? Am yeah. I, um, am I highlighting? Am I Zenithal? Not, not really. I'm, I'm kind of just painting this thing this color. Okay. Right now. Um, so real, not much going on really. Just, ooh, what's going on here? Didn't thin your paint side. Maybe not. I think actually, yeah, let me see what's going on. How's yours working? I haven't tried it yet. I was going to see how much you are putting on before I... Oh, I'm going to put on a lot, but we've got, got some kind of a technical airbrush issue here. So let me let me figure that out. Brett, you're going to have to... I'm going to uh, try I'm gonna try with a little thinner. Okay. I, I was working earlier when I did this. Um, and by earlier, I mean a few days ago. But sure, I'll add a little bit of water. We'll see. But at this point, I think I'm probably just going to have to clean my airbrush out. Um, but yeah, this is really, if, and you can switch to your to your top down too if you want to show it. Um, this is really just that. Yeah, that's it. Just uh, get it on there pretty good, pretty thick. <coughs> Excuse me. Okay. I mean, you want me to do this directionally in like sort of a xenophall form? Uh, not really for this color. We we do have one more color coming coming after this. Uh, that we're gonna do that with, but for this one, we can really just uh, get it on there. Okay, you can see I have a, I have a split here. This was my one of my print failures. Um, one of our Discord members, Grotworks, was helping me diagnose some of the printing issues I was having. Apparently, uh, temperature in the garage was a little bit warm, combined with some older resin, combined with some longer print times um, caused some print failures, and this is one of them. This was deemed uh, not sufficiently bad to <laughs> get excluded from the from the train. I, I was I was fine with it, and actually, you know, it's funny. I uh, I think you had asked me. You had said maybe you could put some some green stuff or something. To, yeah. Um, Fill it with some putty. I, I think I just didn't have any here and I was like, you know what, I just need to prime this thing and go. Yeah, it's fine. It's going to be fine. Uh, worst case scenario, we'll just put a piece of moss there every now and then. Yeah, I think or that's at, the great... At, at every then. <laughs> I think that's the great thing about the moss is it it hides all the imperfections. Yeah, exactly. Uh, all right, still working on my airbrush, but what Brett's doing is basically it. No big, uh, no big secret to this part of the process. This drab paint is just so that the crew 10 is not like super stark and black in its coloration. Um, as always, I want to avoid super dark colors like that. Um, so, when you're done with that, Brett, you're yeah. going to use skeleton bone. How do you feel about this? Does this look good? Yeah, it looks great. Okay. It's okay, yeah, like you've left some shading in there. And also, like um, everything else, we are going to be uh, tinting this, like like so much of, of the rest of this. Um, so, yeah, he heads up. Now, uh, I do want to just once again plug our new YouTube channel. Yes, here um, we go. Here's and, the plug. Yeah, there it is. And uh, we do already have a video up. Let's see. Uh, the very first hobby stream we did, which was about five weeks, five, six weeks ago now, um, Adrian and I painted some trees. Yeah. And the trees Adrian and I painted uh, went onto like this canyon board that they have since used on the channel. You guys will see it again if you haven't yet. Um, it has a Fortress of Redemption and it's sort of like an American West canyon board with these with lots of trees, like some kind of lush greenery there. Sorry, do you want me using wolf gray next? Oh, we just used wolf gray. Now you're going to use I'm using white. Okay, skeleton good. bone. Yeah. Good. Um, <clears throat> so uh, we did one of the types of trees that was on the board that we didn't show you guys how to make uh, on that episode were these pine trees that we made uh, these kind of roots with with Magisculpt. And so we actually have that video up there on the on the on the channel. It's it's the only video there right now, but there will be many more. Um, I'm working on a video. Actually, it's almost done. Uh, that'll be coming up in the next uh, couple weeks about um, getting a little bit more mileage out of some different GW kits using pink foam, also, you know, doing things like uh, weathering them in kind of interesting ways. So, Brett, this one you could zenithal a little bit, but again, if you think about what we're going to be adding to this tent, yeah. you don't exactly have to because where you're painting down there at the bottom is mostly going to be um, the camo, right? right. So it, it's not super, super important that you don't zenithal, but a, a little bit can, can look good. Okay. Um, so anyway, yes, please uh, hop over if you are a fan. Um, hop over and 
subscribe to the new channel. You guys will start seeing stuff popping up all the time. And of course, our weekly stream will be migrating there. And if you have a friend who's like a hobby guy, we all know like the hobby guy, right? Who like seriously is like just hobbying. He's like, you're like, oh yeah, we should get a game in soon. And he's like, yeah, yeah, we should get a game in soon. And that game like never hop happens. And you're like, oh yeah, that game's never going to happen because in my group, that's the hobby guy, right? But like, he's always the guy that you go to when you have hobby questions. Right, right. He, you know, everybody has a hobby guy like in their circle, right? He like, he like plays, he, maybe he plays like once or twice a year. Um, anyway, if that hobby guy has been like, hey, look, I don't want to see uh, Adrian and Brian beat up on Bridger all the time, uh, but they want to see, you know, Brett and Zach paint some, paint some tents and some crew trees, yeah. please tell the hobby guy about us. Right? We'd love to have the hobby guy. Um, so thank you again for those of you who have been watching, and super thank you for those of you who will continue watching on our new channel. Yeah, and like Zach said, um, starting next week, the live streams are going to migrate over there. So... Um, and, and then we're also going to be doing a lot of uh, a lot more um, VOD. Uh, that's an acronym. Video uh, pre-recorded video content uh, that we're going to release on this new channel as well. Yes. All right. Yeah. What are you up to now, Zach? Well, uh, how's your airbrush cleaning going? Coming? Not. Out? Yeah, I don't know. Something's up with that. It was acting a little funkier earlier today. You so, use your new airbrush. Yeah, I do. I do have a Sotar here, so it's it's a little thinner, tinier of of a of a stream, but why not? We'll give it a try here. Um, maybe this guy I've can do it. I got this guy loaded up. If you also just want to use this. Yeah. Maybe we'll see. Yeah, this is going a little, little better. I'm actually starting to wonder if there's something up with the tank. Um, I secretly unplugged Zach's air compressor when uh, before the show. Yeah, <laughs> it's not even plugged in. <laughs> that would be that would be that would be uh, that would be it, right? No, this this seems to be doing. How about okay. I give you this and you can move on to the next step? And I, I'll, I'll... I think this is okay now. I think I think the Sotar is working. Okay, but I still want to give you this so that you can move on to the next. Okay, step. okay, okay. Yeah, uh, let me just finish with the Wolf Gray. So yeah, Wolf Gray not a big deal as you go on. Um, the only one that really matters is is the camo. Remember, that's actually a camo pattern. Uh, if you make some mistakes, you can cover it with a camo pattern. Hopefully. Okay, yeah. I'll, we'll, we'll trade off. Thanks, Brett. Uh, you're, you've done bone. I've done bone. I'm going to do bone on this guy. Yep, okay, awesome. Okay. So I'm going to set this troublemaker aside for a second and uh, clean out this so far. So what we're moving on, what I'm going to move on to now is, is doing the camo. Um, when you do the camo, you're going to be selecting a, a few different greens, uh, and don't overthink it, right? Don't like put too much different green, um, like d don't, don't, don't overthink it. I, I'm not sure any other way to say it other than don't overthink it. Uh, so what I'm going to do here is clean this guy out, make sure it's nice and clean and, um, start off with the grass layer and I'm going to put the grass layer, there's like the tall uh, one I just did with the scissors you guys saw. Um, I'm going to put that in first. I'm actually going to use that template twice. Um, I have sort of a pattern here. Write your patterns down for camo, especially if they're layering on top of each other. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and I can also now show you guys how the stencil works. I just spilled a lot of paint. Is it all right? Yeah, it's fine. We're having uh, some airbrush. Uh, we're having some airbrush messes today. Yeah, huh? I just want to. Um, I want to address some of the uh, comments in chat. Actually, um, uh, Zeno Drag is, is saying it's a shame that this requires 3D printed parts. Um, I think one of the things, you know, the trees, yes, um, the tents, not not so much though. One of the things we talked about earlier is that the original article for these was. Uh, uh, was based around the idea of making these these out of cardstock, and so if you want to uh, try making these tents out of cardstock, you absolutely can. Um, and the original PDF uh, that we have linked in the in the description goes through how to do, it, and it actually talks about how to make tau terrain as well out of plumbing fittings and some uh, plastic containers. So there's a whole, you know, from two, in 2002 before 3D printing was a thing, the original article that that mo prompted all of this was. Uh, was, was sort of a more analog process. And um, we're using 3D printed parts today because um, we wanted to showcase that, but you know, it's certainly not required. Um, the trees, I think you'd have a little bit more work to, to try to make um, you know, on your own. Do you have any ideas, Zach, about how you might make, I mean, I guess a log, you could just actually use a log. <laughs> use a log. Um, yeah, um, I, I guess, I think what I would say about these 
this style of tree. Um, that is to say the the super tall kind of mimicking a redwood yeah. style. I think what I would say is um, I, I, off the top of my head, without using a lot of product, and by what I'm going to suggest is Magisculpt, which is what I was just talking about. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> I would say I don't know that I have an answer of without really using a lot of Magisculpt, how you could how you could make those trees. Yeah. Um, but certainly making smaller trees with Magisculpt is something I've done before. I've done in the past. Um, so yeah, there, there's there's lots of options. Uh, I, green stuff might be a little too yeah. again like not economical. I almost uh, think like even like, if you use an off brand like the Gale Force Nine brand or something. I almost was thinking like like plaster, like uh, building materials. Go to Home Depot and get some like yeah a plaster of Paris or like spackling compound or something. Yeah, I've made old uh, ones before um, with wireframe, and then you can put a, almost anything around them. Yeah. That's sort of like a clay. Um, any anything like that. Yeah. So while I'm not sure, I would say, hey, you can definitely make this type of tree yeah. without using again like an insane amount of uh, an insane amount of of different um, uh, like spackling and clay right, and right. stuff. You can make smaller trees. The other thing, Bridger's reminding us. Of course, we always recommend this. I don't know how we could have forgot. If you don't have your own 3D printer, uh, you can get stuff made from Shapeways. Yeah, at least um, Shapeways. I don't know. Is there any are there other? I mean, I think finding having a we've talked about this about this before. Having a um, you know a foam cutter in your local hobby group is a great idea. Just one that you share amongst yourselves. Yeah. Um, if it's getting to the point where having access to a three D printer is another great uh, thing for a a hobby group to have. Um, but yeah, if you if you know somebody who has a three D printer, you don't have to be the one to. To, to own and operate it. Uh, in fact, I think of 3D printers uh, are, are in the same category for me as like boats uh, or swimming <laughs> pools, where it's great to know somebody who has one rather than owning it yourself. They're actually kind of a huge pain in the butt to to work with yourself. So the 3D printer. Yeah, I would. But I, you I are sort of, our 3D printer guy. I know. I begrudgingly took the plunge <laughs> because I, I I sort of realized that nobody else was going to do it, and I, I wanted access, but. Um, yeah, not my not my first choice. Would not be my first choice. But you know, you do what you got to do for the, the good of the hobby group. Which is great. We we super appreciate it, actually, Brett. Um, now, to to that end, yeah, like if you like Brett's saying, hey, it, it, like see if you can co-op group it. But of course, um, that's what Shapeways kind of is. If you can't, right? Right. Um, you know, and even not Shapeways is sort of like a commercially available solution to this, where you don't have to interface with any humans. But there are groups online where you can, yeah, just uh, pay people to pre print stuff for you. Okay, Brett, if we could get over the shoulder here, I'm gonna I'm gonna try again uh, against my better judgment. I tried to clean my airbrush again. Again, I can use the Sotar if I need to, um, but I, let me try one more time with the with the with my Badger Patriot. So here I am now applying the stencil now. This is the old stencil, the one I used to do this guy, um, and I did this a few days ago. So for for this one, uh, it, it's starting to show its age. It's it's still kind of sticky. Um, you can see the paint is is manipulating it a little bit, but that's okay. We don't need like pristine uh, creases on this style of tent, and anyway, we're not really going to get them once once we do this. Um, now, the last thing uh, that we actually want to do, uh, actually I forgot, two, we do have a couple steps left on this. Um, so I'm gonna hit it one more time. We're gonna go back and hit it, sorry, but we have to hit it a little bit more with the Wolf Gray. Okay. Um, around the top, go back a step, believe it or not, because then we actually, we kind of goofed, I kind of goofed. Um, and we want to use the uh, bone to, to dry brush. So we're gonna, we're gonna do the, we're gonna do this. I'm gonna not use the dry brush the badger anymore. A little bummed about what's going on there. Figure that out afterwards. Um, yeah, sorry. I, yeah, I screwed up. I was thinking about how annoyed I am by my airbrush. Let it get to me. Okay, here we go. So uh, we'll we'll stick with this, and we're gonna do the wolf gray here over top. Okay, it's not changing too much. And then we're gonna use that skeleton bone color, uh, which I think is just called 
Skeleton bone. Skeleton bone, yeah. Skeleton bone. Uh, we're going to use skeleton bone then to dry brush to give it kind of this this uh, wavered look. Yeah. Uh, and actually, we, do you want me to do that before now? that, I'm sorry, we have one more step before that. Jeez, I really need to check my notes here, uh, which is that we need to tint it. So we're going to tint mm. with Anthonian Camo Shade. Oh, so okay. yeah, you can just you can do yours right now. Um, I was like, wait, why isn't this looking all old and grimy? And I was like, oh, we didn't tint it. That's why. Okay, so uh, tinting, as if you've watched some of the stream, we tint a lot of stuff. And we're actually going to go back as well and tint our trees while we're doing this tinting as well also. So, um, and the t tree tinting is, is sort of interesting because uh, we're not going to tint all of the tree, just like we're going to tint up it. Okay, so Anthony and Camera Shade, you've got one, I've got one. Yep. Um, we're not doing, we're not worried about this process here, doing anything special. Really just want to totally coat the tree in wet greenness here. Um, I'm not going all the way down because I don't need to. Um, I don't know, I guess I'm saving paint a little bit, but uh, I am going all the way down on the front vestibule kind of area of the, of the tent. And I'm trying to make sure that I actually get so much green that I can see it starting to pull up sort of near the top. So there's sort of what it, it should look like uh, here. And I'll glam cam that for us in a second. Um, <clears throat> this looks so good. We did this uh, last week with, uh, with Antonian Camo Shade as a tint, and it was amazing. Uh, and it, 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 it's amazing here as well. This is such a great trick. Yeah, um, the tinting is, is like my favorite. Tinting with the airbrush. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay, so I'll, I'll set this on glam cam if we can get a look for a second. There is the current tent currently on glam cam. Um, and then, Brad, if you want to just swap there for a second. So just going to look kind of like that. Again, not super worried about the bottom because I'm going to, all the camo is going to, going to be there. Um, now, the ne next thing I'll do here real quick is show you guys, we'll, we'll tint one of these trees up here um, that Brad and I just did today. So yeah, let me grab one of these that has not been tinted. Okay, uh, so the, the tree, we last step while we're, while we're tinting things, the, the tent. And the tree tint is, is pretty straightforward, um, except I, like what I do is I don't, you can see I'm not going quite all the way up to the top here. You're just doing the base. Just doing, uh, I'd say like two thirds of the way up. Yeah, this is like the, the moss that's growing on the tree near the, near the bottom, near the, yeah. near the ground. And again, like actually if I, if I miss some areas, I'm not super worried about that. Um, and so that's it. It goes, actually the process goes pretty quick. Uh, tint, that's kind of why I love tinting. It, you, you get this great look with very minimal effort. Yeah. Um, run them through your airbrush if you haven't. Uh, it's, it's, it's a nice little natural looking improvement. I don't know that there's a lot of models other than like we said, Nurgle, that I, that I would do that, that I would start or end with that process on. Mm -hmm. But um, certainly I think it's good for, for trees. Okay. So we started with a medium gray, we tinted green, and then what's our next step? Our next step is we're gonna do a little bit of a dry brush on, on the tent. Okay. Uh, so we'll have to kind of give it a sec to, to dry. And while we do that, we can get our, our ammo colors here together. So let's do that. I'm gonna do grass. I'm gonna do start with a dark green. And I wrote all these down as you definitely wanna make sure you do. So tall grass, I'm using a color called uh, I'm using this color here called Naga Green. Um, these are Reaper paints. Um, so Naga Green, it's kind of like a Kelly Green, like a, like a medium green. Mm -hmm. um, Naga Green, then we're gonna do the broadleaf pattern in Pale Green, which is sort of bright. Then we are doing another grass layer. We're gonna go back and, and do, so we have like layering kind of. Uh, and the grass we're gonna do, the second grass we're gonna use this one called Wilderness Green. It's perfect, perfectly aptly titled, yeah. right? Uh, and then finally, we're going to use a dark green on the little plants. I don't know if you guys saw this type, but there's like some ground plants, like almost like ferns that I did here. Uh, you can see them against my, my, my hand on the camera. And we're going to do those dark green at the bottom. And they're kind of like the most striking, I would say. Okay, so dry brush. Boom. I'm good. Yeah. Let's and do it. we're doing bone again. And you kind of want to wait till this, this ink dries, right? 
Yeah, kind of. Now, the thing we can do is uh, give it a little pat with our hands to pick some of it up. Right. The tint's still going to be there. I'm not too worried about it. Or give it a pat. Brett's using a towel, which is probably better than your hand, um, at least for the purpose of your hand. If you do use your hand, uh, make sure you're not about to get it on something else important. Um, but it's, it doesn't really matter. Um, actually, I, when I was doing these uh, the other day, I... I uh, I did that too. I didn't feel like waiting for it to dry, yeah. so I did that. Yeah, and we're just I'm going to put a little bit on, and we're back to dry brushing again. Uh, skeleton bone here. Okay. Basic, back I can to basic use some of this brushing. paint that I spilled. Oh, perfect. Uh, for for my dry brushing. Okay, and you can see uh, if we can do a little over the shoulder here, but you yep. can see again, it's just going to kind of I, I don't know bring it to life a little bit. Uh, it's picking up the ridges. We don't really care about the ridges down on the bottom. Uh, once again, because the camos is, is going on next. I chose to kind of do like a camo painted recently type look. Like I said earlier, if you wanted the camo to look a little bit older, yeah. you could do the camo. Um, do the dry brushing. You after. could do the dry brush last, the last step, and kind of make it look like the, the crude have, have creased their paint job. Yeah. I think I might give that a try with mine, actually. Yeah. Especially like these, the actual ridge, ridges, like yep. these. Um, if we wanted to pick those up, that would yep. really make it look like, you know, they, they painted it, then they folded it up, and some of the paint broke off, yep. like that kind of a look. Okay, super easy, and again, you're, it's kind of surprisingly, um, oh, I do like to make sure I get the, with the other two I did, I like to make sure I get the flap. Um, pick the, fla the flap picks up dry brushing really nicely, nicely actually. Oh, nice. Yeah. yeah, I would not have guessed that. Okay, yeah, I, I think I stumbled upon that. So here we go. Uh, we are ready for some stencils now. So what I'm going to do is start with the uh, grass, and the grass is going to be Naga green. This is like a medium green. Here's the stencil I made in the past. I'll start with this one, and I'm going to give Brett the one I made today. It's going to yep. work a little bit easier. Okay. What you're going to do before you use it is take the backing off. I guess you also could choose to not take the backing off and just press it down, but it, <laughs> it, it helps a little bit. Um, and obviously that's what it's for. So it, it's a little sticky. And I'm just going to kind of pass it to him like this and put it on his solo cup. Thank you. Okay. Now for me, as, as I begin this, uh, I'm, I'm pressing some of them down. Again, I'm not like trying to copy the exact cut that I did. I'm just trying to get these these stripes, for lack of a better word, right. going up the tent. That's it. That's the only goal here, really. So, boom, boom, boom. Naga green. Get a little bit in there. Coming We're just nice. doing sort of one side at a time, right? With these? One side of the tent. Yeah, one, one kind of area at a time. Make sure that things are, you can see there, it's already starting to, starting to come together here on mine. But yeah, you're not really, you're, you're using it, I mean, I don't know, almost like a, like a, I guess like a, not, I'm trying to think how to say this. You're, you're not really concerned with using this vinyl the way you would think you should use this vinyl for something like this. And it's, look, look guys, it's not gonna stick anyway because this is all ridgy and bumpy. Um, yeah. It's, it's, it's not gonna stick. I'm well. trying to stick it right now and it's not sticking, it's not just sticking. like you say. Yeah, yeah. so it's, it's just not gonna do it. Um, there are, there are like, uh, time and there's a time and a place for serious hardcore stencils, right? Um, I've used stencils, uh, vinyl, the vinyl stencils on my towel from, um, <clears throat> a couple of different companies. They're awesome. They are a super big pain in the butt to usually, use, usually, but once you get them going, they're great. You can see, that's it. Boom, we've got some gr our first uh, bunch, chunks of grass sticking up there. You wanna stick on that the, on the, on the, the Naga Green. Yeah, we'll, we'll put this back on the turntable. What's a big glam cam episode today? And there we go. All right, there you can see it. And as you start doing the camo, I think like the thing you're going to kind of find is it's sort of fun to, um, the, one of the things you're asking yourself as, as you go is like, at what point do I stop, <laughs> right? Yeah. And um, you'll know because um, it'll start to, you'll start to get like, it'll start to look sloppy. Um, so I, I would recommend that more than like three or four. Um, I, I did four on mine and even four, I, I was like, I, I could have just stuck with three layers. Um, I, I'm, I'm glad I did four, but it, it was it was pushing it. Like if 
I think if you're going to do more than four layers, let me say this. If you're going to do more than three or four layers, they need to be purposeful. And I, I would s submit that our last layer is purposeful. And what I mean by purposeful is you're saying, rather than generic shrubbery wilderness look, I want to make a specific plant in the camo. I want to put a, I want to put a, a, a unique flower. Like this world yeah. I'm building the camo for has these large pink or blue flowers or something. And so I'm going to make a plant in the foreground, two or three of them per tent, that's got like this pink right. plant. That's pretty cool to match the camo stencil on your tents to the if you're doing like unique type of foliage that you're doing for the board. Yeah. The rest of the board. Um, we, so I, I guess to some extent I've done that, but not not to the extent I'm saying right now, like copying right. an exact plant. Um, but our last our last stencil is going to be fairly purposeful. It's like this dark green fern, like I was talking about. So, okay, on to the next stencil color. Uh, we're done with it. We're, I'm done with my first grass. So now I'm going to do the broad leaf, which I'm doing in pale green. Okay, the broad leaf actually I find works a lot easier than the grass. The grass one's kind of the kind of the troublemaker here uh, on, on this one. So uh, let me. I have a few different broad leaf stencils. And we're just going to start putting a few down. I'm going to use some of my old ones and some of my new ones. Uh, Brad, if we can look yep. top down, or actually shoulder. Shoulder, I think, is going to be better. That's the wrong button. All right, there you go. There we go. Okay, so again, I'm, I'm not super worried about how I put the stents on. And by the way, I, you can kind of go up and down a little bit. I'll show you what I mean in a second. But here, I've gone down, so to speak, meaning I'm not capturing the whole leaf shape. Okay, so like this. Boom, 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 boom. Okay, like I was saying earlier, you really want to make sure you press that little guy in. It's going to work. It's not going to look good. The, well, the paint's just going to get under it, you know? Yep. So, um, okay, there it is. And our pale green, this is a bright green. Hold things down as you need to. It's going to, you're going to be covering up some of your grass, obviously, that you just put in. And we pull back, and there they are. Couple, couple broad leaves there. The, the crease picked up a little bit, but um, I'm gonna put this one over here. I'm gonna try using one of the new ones where I made the, the crease a little bit bigger. So again, just peeling off the backing here of the stencil. Um, I really actually uh, think that this stencil, making kind of making your own stencil things, super perfect for camouflage. Um, I'm not sure, let's see, you know, you'd have to be Pretty confident with your precision cutting skills and stuff like that if you wanted to do intricate designs, I think. Yeah, I, I like it because with camouflage, you want it to be sort of random and uneven. You don't want it to be perfectly straight lines. You want it to meet at right angles. It's okay if it's got a little variation to it. And that's perfect for this sort of quick and dirty hand cutting of stencils. Yeah, exactly. Um, so. Last one here, I'm going to put four broad leaves on my tent. What I was saying earlier about uh, bringing it up or down, like, you know, if I, if I put this guy down here, it's going to be a shorter broad leaf. If I pull it up, it's going to be a little taller. I'll make this one shorter. So again, you're, you're not really worried about copying the pattern on the stencil that you made as far as like the three leaves together are concerned, but you're, you're just using the three different shapes that you made uh, to get a little, to get some variation. And then the other way to get variation, of course, is like I'm doing right here, just push it up or down a little bit. And so there we go. Now, uh, you'll notice, I actually kind of find that this pale layer, after you do it, you might say, I, I'll tell you, I found that I liked the tent the way things looked less after I did it. I was sort of like, oh, wow, this I just made this thing worse. <laughs> um, but what I found is then that by layering like the next two colors, and the, the, this is gonna be the lightest color, the, the pale green, the next two colors are getting darker again. Uh, they're actually the darkest two. So we're actually doing the dark colors in front. Uh, and, and as we do that, uh, I, I found that I like the light colors in the back a little bit better. Your thought process and your instinct is that, well, I should, should I do dark colors farther away and light yeah. colors closer? Right. What you want to think about when you ask yourself that question, we, we learn that a lot depending on what it is that we are painting. What are we painting, right? We're painting a fruit bowl and most of the fruit is the same color. That's a good idea. Kind of one of the cool things about, about nature and one of the ways camouflage works 
is that um, there is a degree to things that are closer or things that are in different levels of light are brighter, obviously. But uh, again, there's canopies and there's just different shades of green, right? So ultimately, again, don't overthink your layering. Don't yeah. say to yourself, oh, I, I really need this color to be, uh, this, this is the brighter color, it should be up close. Yep. Um, I found that I kind of like the look of the, of the darker colors in front. Sometimes dark things will be in front of br bright things. Yep, kind of kind of just how it is. So, uh, so I'm using the, uh, the pale, dark green here pale green. for the broadleaf? For the broadleaf. Okay. And there's two of the broadleafs. This is the one that we did today. Yep. That's the bigger ones. Um, okay, I'm going back to the grass. Okay. How'd your, oh, your grass looks amazing. Yeah, I think I spent, I wasn't talking while I was doing it, and I think yeah. I spent a lot more time on it than you did. So. I think so, too. It looks um, great, yeah. I'm happy with how it came out. Okay, so uh, back to grass. This grass is going to be wilderness green. If there's a better color for today's camping-themed episode, I'm not sure what it is. Um, this one doesn't want to come out of the squeezer. That's okay. That probably means it's sort of thick, which means I'm going to add a little water to it preemptively. Um, now, I should say we've got the tree. Yep. We've got the tent. Yep. And that's what we've advertised, but we do have one more surprise camp element. Surprise camp element that we're going to get to here in a second. Awesome. Um, so if you're if you're like, boy, I could use a surprise on this dreary Wednesday. Good news, there is a surprise coming. Uh, okay, so wait for it. Yeah, we'll we'll get to it in a second. So here I go with my second layer of grass. Uh, again, I'm kind of holding things down. I think Brett actually is is the pro at the grass. Oh, you know what? Mm, I did the wrong color. Ooh, pale green. Another another round of Naga green. Oh, yep, yep, yep. That would yeah. actually that would actually look bad. Yep. <laughs> Don't want to do the same color. The exact that, same. That color. that would be the worst thing you could do when doing camouflage. Have everything be the same color? Yeah. Can you imagine? Oh. Oh, I can. <laughs> Okay, so here I go, getting my, uh, getting my wilderness green in here, which is a little thick. It's coming out of the airbrush nicely. I'm, I'm pretty into Sotar, so I did pick up a new airbrush. Um, I was like, I, I, I'm, I'm starting a, a new army that I'll do some streaming on here shortly, um, and it's, it's Thousand Suns, which is unique to the style of armies I've painted in the past, um, which re require uh, a lot of armor. And nice, nice kind of broad areas for airbrushing. Yeah. But I was like, you know what? I'm going to need to get a little bit of a something that can go a little tighter. I have used the tiny needles before on my Badger, um, on the Badger Patriot. But I thought that the Sotar would be just a little bit more fun. And I was like, you know what? People you ask about it. I want to get some experience with it, you know? Yeah, I think that's a question that I have is like, you know, how do you decide whether to get a second needle for your existing airbrush versus buying a new airbrush? And I think, you know, the needle is obviously less expensive, mm -hmm. but it requires that you swap it out. Mm -hmm. Which is actually, was my main reasoning, right? Yeah, like I, okay. I was like, if I can just uh, have this airbrush with the tiny needle, and um, it also has a different grip, so it holds, I guess, you know, people say a little more like an illustrator's brush. Meaning I'm Got holding it. it up, up, up here as opposed to back a bit. Yeah. Um, and I, I, I really have not used it. Today is actually the first day I used it. I haven't. I, I've had it for a few days, but haven't gone to use it yet. Um, and I haven't really done any fine detail work on it. Uh, I'm super glad I had it today, though, because uh, I have to apparently do probably like a like a 30 minute, 40 minute deep cleaning of my of my page. Yeah. Which would be like a bit of a, a bit of a hiccup in a in a in a live stream, right? Uh, that's the challenge. Yeah, technical yeah. difficulties during a live. Although stream. it might go with the camping theme a little bit. Like something always goes wrong with your camping. When you're gear, camping. Right? <laughs> yes, it does always. Yeah, that's true. My one of my worst camping stories when I was fairly young. I went camping with a buddy, and uh, we start setting up our tent. Um, and in the this is the eastern U.S., like Pennsylvania, Maryland area. And um, summertime, and it was, it was hot, sticky, but not too bad. We started hammering our tent in. Yeah. And we hammered our tent, as we're hammering our tent in, uh, we're like suddenly like I, this searing pain on my, on my ankle. Oh, gosh. And what we realized is that we were hammering our tent in, in the eastern U.S. are these, uh, they call them yellow jackets. I know that term is used um, interchangeably across the world. But it is a type of bee 
that yeah, does stinging not insect. It does not sting you and then like leave a stinger and then go and then die. It just bites you or stings you and stays alive, right? Yeah. Um, so my buddy and I just start out and we spent the rest of that camping trip sleeping under the stars. And don't they make? <laughs> Um, don't they make nests in the dirt? Like, yeah, uh, they, they underground? live underground. So yeah. we're like hammering these these hammering nails into, 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 into a hornet's nest. Exactly. Yeah. Not, not great. Um, okay, I'm moving on to our final uh, tree fall. I'm moving on to our final um, our final plant, which is going to be the uh, the fern, the little the cute little dark fern here. Um, so my fern is sticking its leaves up a little bit. Uh, Brett, if we could. Over the on a shoulder, shoulder camera, yeah, shoulder camera on this yeah. guy. Um, so I'm making sure things are pretty down. I actually do want this tree, this plant. I'm only gonna put a few of them on each, but I really do want to make sure that it um, it, it it comes out and, and plays as a plant, not not just like a glob of of green. So like I said, this is our final layer, and we want this layer to make a statement. Like I was I was giving a sample of like a flower or something like that. So I'm pressing things down, and I'm going in. I pull it off, and there's my plant. Okay, you can see the leaves kind of coming up here. Uh, I super, I super like this cute little guy here. Um, Aww. Yeah. So a couple more here. I'm gonna, like I said, I'm just gonna do three. One kind of on the back, one kind of on the left side, and one kind of on the right side. Pressing nice and hard into this one, Brett. When you when you play with this uh, last yeah. one, you'll have to, you'll see it's the same. Got to really press down in here. Yep. Uh, let me push it up a little bit so people can see. Yeah, super pressing down. There we go. Now, if you're having it kind of curl up, one of the fun things you can do with an airbrush is that since it's also blasting out air, it will press this down a little bit for you. So come down at, on this thing, like this way, rather than up. And you'll because if you go up, the paint's more likely to blast up. Yeah. And there you go. Okay. And then the last one we're gonna do right here, and I'll even show you without sticking too much. I can still get the same, pretty much the same effect with the leaves. Just when you cut your stencil, cut distinct leaves. Don't don't cut things. Don't cut anything too small. However big you think you want the leaf, cut it a little bit bigger. Yeah. Uh, and that way it'll it'll show it'll show up. I'll do one more right here. And there we go. So not super fancy, but uh, gives it a nice camo look. I'm gonna put this guy on glam cam. <clears throat> One more glam. Well, actually, no. We're gonna have another glam cam. Here we go. Right, just when you get a chance, there we'll look at that. And there's our finished crew tent on glam cam with the green sticking up there. Um, okay, now I said we had a camping surprise, and it's kind of a tiny one, but we've got our trees, we've got our tent. Okay, and so our last one, I'm gonna put on the glam cam here. Uh, done with the tent. We are gonna do, of course, no camping trip is complete without a tiny little campfire. So we've got a couple of tiny little campfires we're gonna, we're gonna paint oh, up. Oh, that's so cute. Yeah, and uh, this is actually one of the reasons I, I busted out the, the Sotar, is to do just a little bit of cute flame work here. So this is the last uh, step in our, in, our, uh, in our camping excursion here, uh, this, this little uh, fire. And it's actually pretty easy to do. We can do the, we're gonna do the whole thing with an airbrush. Uh, with, 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 you know, I, I think, you could do not a fine-tipped airbrush like a Sotar. I think you could use a normal airbrush to do it. Well, um, I'm gonna try to do it with a normal airbrush. Brett's gonna do it with a normal airbrush, and it, it's gonna be it's gonna be fine. Um, we can get into like individual flames in in some interesting ways with the fine detail brush. Um, but certainly, people paint flames all the time. This yeah. is nothing new, and they do it without airbrushes, and they do it without fine uh, needle airbrushes. So. Okay. Great. Oh, you're ready for the last. I'm ready loop? for the last stencil. I can also just skip this step and uh, move on to fires if we want to do that. Uh, no, go ahead. You, you can do that. It's not. Yeah. Do this guy. Yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah. Great. You got time. Um, okay. So we'll talk about the fire here uh, and the colors I'm going to use while Brett finishes up. Um, so the the way I like to do my flame, my airbrush flame work is as follows. Well, at least for the, this camping rock. Um, first, I. You know, I, I didn't, it, it's got this kind of layer of rocks around it. We'll, you'll see it here again in a second when we put it on, on the camera after after each step. Um, but I didn't paint the rocks because we're going to get glow on the rocks from the fire. They're black right now, and you're going to kind of see them. We'll, we'll, we'll do a close-up, and you're, you're going to kind of see that they don't, 
Um, we could paint them gray, but I, I, I don't think it's a look that matters. I, yeah. Like leaving them black is, is really fine. Yeah. So, and it also um, sort of makes it look like there's shadow where the fire is not. It's sort of exactly. like, almost like a reverse OSL. Yeah. If we go over the, if we go do a shoulder on this thing, how, uh, how close can we? Uh, so it's, it's, a, it's a little tiny guy, but you can see there. Um, and so a reverse OSO or like a glow effect is exactly what we're going for here. So, okay, the colors we're going to use. First thing I'm going to do is we want red up at the top, orange kind of in the middle, and yellow at the bottom. So I'm using red. First I'm going to do everything kind of red. And again, I'm cool with hitting the rocks, especially the parts of the rocks that are facing the fire. So that's going to be red. Then we're going to do an orange. Then after the orange, we're going to do like a, uh, a golden kind of yellow. And then finally, we're going to use a bright yellow. Talking a little bit earlier about this with the Nurgle, right? So here we go. How are you doing? Good. Um, I need some water. OK, so I'll go, uh, go ahead, uh, uh, a step here ahead of Brett, um, and start starting with just, this is brilliant red. Reaper miniature is brilliant red. Yeah. Uh, put a little bit of in here. Oh, this one did not come out. We did this one earlier today. We did our, our sample campfire earlier today. Um, so off to the side is our red. And the fire, the flame all red. And the, the flame all red and the rocks getting a little bit of the red on them too. Yeah. I do not think Brett's going to have any trouble with uh, a larger airbrush on this. Um, now, I'm going to leave the top of the fire a little darker, and I'm going to kind of leave it like that forever. We're actually going to come back to the red. Uh, it's going to be one of the last colors we do as well uh, to kind of bring some areas back down, almost like a, like a correction. Um, so red up first. Have you, is this a similar, have you done any um, like heat effects on, on like a melt-a-gun tip or... Bolter tip. I've seen some. Yes. Some like the like the burnt the burnt metal look. Yeah. Thing. I wonder if this is similar to you know this flame effect that you're talking about is similar to something like that. Um, I have done that before. That's uh, I, I have a 30k uh, horse heresy army for Thousand Suns and they're they're like weirdly into rotor cannons. Yeah. So I oh, did. Oh yeah, that's perfect. I did the um, the burnt metal look on them. Yeah. Um, and I, I guess it's similar. That this, that process is weird. You tend to use like clear paints. Okay. Um, yeah, like things that aren't quite at. You don't want. You want it to have a little bit of a transparent look. Right. And then they're like rainbowed in in like that. Right. It's more of a glazing. And you do that with airbrush, or do you do that? I did it with airbrush. I, I've okay. seen. I think you can do. I'm sure you can do it without an airbrush. Right. Though. Yeah. Yeah. Um, actually, the the in, in preparation for. For today's episode, what I what I was researching were pictures of fires, particularly campfires, um, and frequently what's coming up is people painting them, um, uh -huh. like the the coloring of a campfire and stuff like that in both two D and three D ways. And um, I saw some loads of people doing campfires uh, on miniatures without an yeah. airbrush. Obviously, it's doable. Um, yeah, because cool. it okay. actually it actually benefits nicely from dry brush. Yeah, uh, I think I think there's a neat way to, that you could do this with glazing or wet blending. Yeah, if you don't have an airbrush. Okay, so up next uh, is orange. So, Brett, when you get a chance, we'll do a little shoulder view here of the orange. And again, I'm doing um, same kind of thing, except I'm going to leave the top red. And again, I'm pretty cool uh, with hitting the rocks. Although, the way to kind of think of this is you're, you're tightening into the circle each time a little bit more. So I don't, I want to leave some of the rocks red. Um, and I want to leave the tip of the fire red, the top of the fire. And in fact, I'm done. That's it. It didn't, it didn't take much <laughs> at all. So, you know, you, you're, you're, you're getting smaller and smaller circles with each color. Um, and that's why we actually, I, I like to do red one more time at the end to kind of almost, like I said, like almost like fix. Right. Uh, fix issues on the way out. Um, so red all over the place, especially on the outside of the rocks. Then you're going to kind of condense your orange in a little bit more. And then finally, well actually not finally, we're going to now move on to uh, like, a, like a marigold style yellow here. 
The uh, biggest thing when you're doing um, campfires is you're just going to clean your airbrush all the time because you're doing like each color for like a second. Yeah, and and you're going in this case from darker paints to lighter paints. If you're going the other way, you might be able to get away with it without cleaning necessarily, but. Yeah. Um, okay, so here we go, definitely. Uh, I, I, yeah, definitely clean, guys, or you're not gonna notice many gradients in your fire. So, okay, here we go, uh, here's, here's our fire. And now I'm going with the, with the yellow. Again, my circles continue to get smaller, and really I'm almost just going around the base of the fire here now. And I, whatever happens to the rocks kind of happens, but I don't, I, I, I'm, I'm not exclusively, or, uh, like I'm not aiming for the rocks at all anymore with the first yellow color. So someone's going to get on, but I, I, I don't really care if the rocks don't get too yellow. If they're just orange and red, um, that, that's, that's cool. So uh, there we go. That's it. Again, not, not a lot of, of, of paint that you're throwing out here um, on each of these. Final color we're going to do is this guy, which is canary yellow. So you can see the difference in these yellows here. We just did uh, the Averin Sunset equivalent, which uh, they call golden yellow here at Reaper, which is probably the, the more helpful title, um, but certainly not the more narrative title. <laughs> you need brilliant red. Yeah, I'm going to get started on a... I'm going to get started on a... Campfire? On a campfire. Oh, and you need a campfire. I need a campfire. There you go. Hook me up with a campfire. Sunrise orange. Brilliant red, sunrise orange. You can have the golden yellow too, right? There you go. Okay, last but not least, canary yellow. And what I like about canary yellow, and what I liked about, not to, not to uh, um, rain on, on Brett's camping trip of, of using the larger airbrush, but what I did like about using um, this kind of finer point, finer needle airbrush on the, on the campfire with the canary yellow, is that allowed me to kind of get in and, and like target individual flames a bit. Yeah, yeah. And so that's what I'm going to do. I think so, I'm going to struggle a little bit with that. I think you'll, it, it's doable. You'll just have to be careful. Uh, which is to be a little less careful. In general, I think you're a more careful painter than me anyway, so you'll be fine. Okay. Can I tell you about uh, my horror story oh, on the yes, camping trip? Oh, yes, please. Um, you I, didn't, I didn't want to, I didn't want to, uh, I didn't want to prod, you know? Yeah. But while you do, uh, can we flip the over the shoulder? Yep. I'll show the, the, the canary yellow here. So this was in the early 2000s, and um, I was with some some school friends, and we were backpacking, and it was like a, a training trip. And we, it was in uh, West Virginia, in the mountains, and uh, in one day, we had every type of precipitation that we could imagine. We had, we had rain, we had snow, we had hail, we had sleet, we had freezing rain. It was very miserable. Um, and you know, it was a backpacking trip, so it's not like, you know, at the end of the day of that, you have to set up your tent, and then you have to pull out your sleeping bag and go to sleep. And, and you're, you're just, wet and you're, you're cold. Just, you're, and it's like, you know, 31 in snow is, so, is way better than... What time of the year was it, did you say? It was uh, like mid-spring, you know, like March or, or early Oh, April. that's that's awful weather yeah. at, uh, in West Virginia. Yeah. And so it's it's like... Um, it's like uh, 30, 34 in rain is way worse than like 31 in snow. Like, because, because as soon as it's rain, you get wet and then you get even colder. At least if it's snowing out, you're right. not... Like, your clothing is not soaking. Um, anyway, yeah, very miserable. Wasn't a fan, but it was so bad, it became like a meme, and it was funny because you all you could do is laugh. Your misery, yeah. Yeah. That's how we all cope sometimes, you know? Yeah. Um, boy, I'll tell you, like, so I, you, you and I are both from east, northeastern U.S., and if there's one weather, where I, uh, one month of the year where I'm not doing anything, outside it's probably march yeah right like if, if i'm gonna if i'm gonna say someone says hey let's do this in march we're gonna do it outdoors right I, i'm probably i'm probably okay yeah to, to not do that yeah um maybe maybe november maybe october but <laughs> march like there's no yeah, outdoor it's... event in the east coast that you do in march that's right? true yeah um you, you, if you try to you know like baseball season kind of gets ready to start 
uh, and you want to go like see like a like an early baseball game, you don't know like you might need to bring like a, a knit cap. You might need to bring a poncho. Right. You should probably take both. Baseball games you know? have the advantage of like if it if it gets bad enough, you can just leave. You can just leave. Yeah. <laughs> You're just done. You're like, cool. There's so that many, like, fun. I'm sure we have baseball fans, but, you know, when you go and watch a baseball game, there are so many, like, there are so many opportunities to just get up and leave. You're like, yeah. oh, yeah, that's, we can just leave now. Yeah, we've, we've, done, we've done the thing. And, and I like baseball, but I'm just saying, when you're at the game, you can be like, up oh, the scores, you know, it's 12 to 1, we can leave. Yep, yep. 12 to 1, my team's winning, we can leave. 12 to 1, my team's losing. We can leave. Definitely we can leave. Yeah. Um, it got a little colder, it got a little hotter, the clouds went away, the clouds came in, we can leave. Yeah, I feel like baseball is a thing you do to like hang out with friends. It's, it's the pastime, right? It's a pastime, yeah. This is such a great summertime episode. We've got camping, we've got baseball. Yeah. We don't have baseball, we just start talking crew, about a little bit. Crew playing crew, baseball? Oh, crew, yeah. They would play with a skull probably. Okay, yeah. so last color I'm going to paint on our campfire. Uh, if we can, Brett, when you're ready, I'm always, uh, Brett's earning his keep here today with his over the shoulder work. So all I'm using now is the red that we started with and I'm just like hitting any area that I feel like got a little too yellow. And the cool part about this of course is red plus yellow equals orange. So all we're really doing is um, that middle area, making sure it, it stays orange. Um, and that's it. You can see there's campfire one, there's campfire two. They look pretty much the same. I'm pretty happy with that. Consistency, super important. Uh, and I'll put these on glam cam here. And we'll have Brett's campfire to join us shortly. Um, while we do that, one sec, finish up cleaning. Brett, uh, let's see how you're doing. Can we zoom in on you? Zoom in on a uh, yeah, little Brett know. cam here? Uh, I don't know how well you can see it here. Oh, on the, yeah, maybe not. <laughs> uh, yeah, no, I, I feel like I'm doing okay. Uh, just copying the techniques that you're talking about. I've got the red down. I'm putting a little bit of orange sort of in the middle. Oh, look at the rocks glow. Yeah, I, I really like this. I remember I was like, oh, I need, I need gray rocks. I don't need gray rocks. After seeing this, I love it. Yeah. Um, um, the instinct is, I agree. Um, and I, I, it's funny, I started painting. I was like, oh, I'll paint the rocks last. And then I would just do a glow, and I was like, wait, no, I, I'm just going to leave it like this. It, yeah. looks, it looks better. I don't know. How, do you, how would you feel about um, modeling a fire like this with green stuff or Milliput or Magisculpt or something like that? Uh, how, would I, how would I feel yeah. about it? Yeah. Uh, I, you can I, use this. You know, uh, no, I, that's okay. I, I, I want to make sure it's coming out clear. Um, you know, for me, the, the honest answer is that I don't, trust my sculpting skills to yeah. do that. Um, so I, I actually did think about it because we were, we had done most of this work and then I was kind of like late, oh, hey, Brett, can you print some campfires too? Yeah. Um, and I was kind of like, oh, do I want to bug Brett for that? Or do, do we, you know, maybe he's not able to do it. He might be too busy, it's short notice. Um, so I was kind of thinking about actually trying to make one with green stuff. Right. Um, but I, I don't really trust my sculpting skills. Yeah. Um, I guess it's, in a way, back to last week, it's another one of my roadblock to hobby, road, uh, hobby, road hobby roadblocks yeah okay um yeah i think i think you could do that and i think it would be fine um again this is just another area where like 3d printing gives us a shortcut to yeah. something that you could probably make work without more analog techniques exactly. but um yeah i think we uh we put a link to where we got the stl for these campfires in the description below as well um these are from artisan guild they have a great kickstarter with a lot of sort of D&D focused fantasy elements. And so this is their adventure camp set, uh, which has a bunch of tents and- Adventure you know, camp, Adventure I love camp, it. yeah. It's like, uh, you know, weapons on racks. At the end of the day, your party sets up a camp and um, yeah, so they've got campfires. Adventure camp. Um, Love it. Uh, great. So you are finishing up here. Yeah. Okay. Let me put these two guys on on the, the glam cam. You can see how our fires look. Um, one more time. Okay. There they go. And we did have a camper around here somewhere. Here's our, here's our camper. We'll add them. Everyone's least favorite camper. <laughs> yeah, we have data showing that. We have data. 
We know this you guys the hate least, these two. Hate, least favorite campers. You know, the worst part about the carnivore is that um, he brings his he brings the hound, you know? Yeah, hounds are pretty vicious. Hounds are vicious. Uh, they're unpleasant, they're smelly, they're aggressive. Guys, note that the crew knows to put the fire a little bit away from the tent. You should do that too if you're doing any camping. So here they are. Here's their trees. And look at this. Look at this just idyllic summer. Uh, oh, also put the fire away from trees. Sorry. There we go. Very idyllic. Summer camping, guys, for your summer. If you're in the northern hemisphere, that is. <laughs> and there it is. Look at that. I love you it. know what? Oh, we can add... Um, we can add the towel because they're friends. Let's see, he's, he's on the lookout for something. He's, he's hanging back a little bit. He's on the lookout for more towel. He's like, mm, I need someone I can talk to. <laughs> conversation's is, a little awkward. This is weird. <laughs> this is a little weird. Um, All right, well, we did it. We did it. Um, we, we made some campsites. Okay, we made some tents, we made some campfires, we made some trees. Um, do we want to talk at all about? Well, so this is this is um, an upgrade to the Taiga board that um, that that we've uh, we've played on the on the channel before. Yeah. Uh, and so um, Zach's been working on some some buildings, some ruined buildings to go to that board, and then this would be uh, sort of an alternate configuration for that board would be with these big redwoods. Exactly. Yeah. The idea is that we're, we've been making um, we did the the hazard striping stuff. And we've been making it, kind of remaking it to be like this industrial mishap area. Yeah. But um, we were thinking, you know what? If we can uh, kind of roll these trees into it, we can have like, like you're saying, an alter alternate configuration. Yep. Um, we're actually going to group them together, have a obscuring rule for them. Yeah. Um, so that it'll be like a like a wilderness. You'll just be in the in the woods. There might be, you know, there might be some crew tents, but that's about it. Yeah. Uh, so we're pretty excited about it. And I think. Um you know, there was uh, some questions in chat about uh, 3D printing and, you know, how do you 3D print and what printer do you use? Um, we're going to, we, you know, we want to address some of that as well. Again, this project has been a great, you know, this is just sort of the final step of it. There was a lot of planning and a lot of effort that went into making these and sourcing the, the STLs for these. Um, so we want to go into that in more detail, but we felt, feel that that's better as pre-recorded content rather than as yeah. a live stream. So that will, is definitely coming and, and, and look out for that in the future. Yeah, um, and to that, to that, yes, please, uh, like, like we said, if, you're, if you've joined recently, follow the links, hop into our new channel, channel Hobby yeah. Titans, Tabletop Titans, sister channel. Um, we'll have Adrian on here for sure. Um, he, he, he's, a hobby, he's a hobby man, you know, we'll have him on. Yeah, um, this is going to be the new home for all of Tabletop Titans hobby content, and we're super excited to to bring you more of this going going forward. Yeah, lots of three D printing. It's it's a specialty of Brett's for sure. So uh, look forward to that. Um, we I, I did see. Uh, thank you, Michael Cody, so much. Uh, glad you enjoyed your stream. You have a great Friday too when Friday shows up. Um, <laughs> have a great Thursday too, Michael. You yeah. know, like you know, and uh, the rest of your Wednesday. Yeah, and the rest of your Wednesday. Don't you know? You can dream. We can all dream. Yeah. You can have a great Thursday. Friday's too. coming. Um, speaking of Thursday, speaking of Saturday, uh, on the on the channel on Tabletop Titans, uh, tomorrow is Coven Drukari. John is back. Uh, tall John. Is he tall? Are you? Who's taller? You or John? John is taller. John's taller. No. Okay. Um, actually, uh, we should do a tall off. We, yeah, we should do a tall off. There should um, be a you pretty, and John. Pretty should, sure John's gonna win that one though. Yeah, but. you and John should play on the stream, and we'll just zoom back a little bit for you guys. <laughs> um, yeah, John is gonna be bringing Coven Drakari against Black Templar, an army you're you're into. Yeah, I'm gonna be tuning into that uh, very closely. I'm just starting a Black Templar army, and I'm excited to get better at playing Imperials. Yeah. Um, Saturday is the launch, official launch of Age of Sigmar 3rd Edition. Yep. You better believe there's gonna be some Age of Sigmar here, and you better believe we're gonna see Bridger playing some Age of Sigmar. That's right. It's gonna be exciting. First time ever. He's been studying a lot. Yep. He said that book, uh, he's been reading that book like like a tomb. Like he's he, just He doesn't been... actually, he just plugs into it and, and uh, downloads it while he sleeps. Yeah, so uh, <laughs> uh, you can uh, see that Saturday. 
Uh, one last time, hop over to your new channel. We're super excited to have you guys with us every Wednesday at 6 p.m. Uh, we'll be doing it starting next week over there. So if you log into here and nothing's happening, go over there, please. Uh, Hobby Titans, join ASAP as possible, as we like to say. And uh, other than that, I think we did it. Brett, anything else? No, I think we're great. Thanks, thanks for joining us tonight. We'll see you next week. Yeah, guys, thanks for joining us on this camping trip, and always be creating. <laughs>